All right, here we go, continuing with chapter 10 on comparing two populations or groups. In section 10.2, as opposed to 10.1, uh, in 10.1 we looked at comparing two proportions, 10.2 we're looking at comparing two means. So in this section we should be able to again describe the shape, center, and spread of a sampling distribution of the difference of two sample means, two sample means. We'll determine whether the conditions are met for doing inference for about the difference in means, the difference between two populations. We'll construct and interpret a confidence interval. So again, that goes back to chapter 8. Perform a significance test, which refers back to chapter 9. And then we'll determine when it's appropriate to use two sample T procedures versus paired T procedures. And paired T procedures so what we did in chapter 9, we're going to look at the difference between those two, between the difference between a paired T procedure and a two sample T procedure. So what if we want to compare the mean, the mean of some quantitative variable for individuals in population 1 and population 2? Well, our parameters of interest are the population means mu1 and mu2. The best approach is to take separate, separate random samples from each population and to compare the sample means, compare the X bars of each of those samples. Suppose we want to compare the average effectiveness of two treatments in a completely randomized experiment. So that's good. We got random assignment. Uh, we use the mean response in the two groups to make the comparison. So just making sure we understand our parameters and statistics. The parameter uh, is done with mu, mu1 and mu2 for the different populations. Our statistics are x bars uh, for each of those. And then we denote our samples if they're from, sam for example, the subscript 1 and a subscript 2 for our second sample. So to explore the sampling distribution of the difference between two means, let's start with two normally distributed populations. So we're starting with two normal distributed populations, which is always good to know. Uh, having known, there's some known mean and standard deviations within that uh, population. So here's some data from the U.S. National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, the heights of 10-year-old girls does follow a normal distribution with a mean of 56.4 and a standard deviation of 2.7. So this information is given to us. Uh, so that's for the girls and then for the boys. It does follow a normal distribution as well with a mean of 55.7 and a standard deviation of 3.8. So they are giving us here our population standard deviation. They are giving that to us uh, right here. So that some bells should go off there and realize that, oh, we could use a Z interval versus a T interval because we do know the population standard deviation. So suppose we take an independent sample of 12 girls. So that'll be our sample from uh, for, uh, our first sample uh, from the first population and eight boys. That's coming from, uh, that'll be our sample two. Let me measure their heights. Well, what can we say about the difference between the mean female height and the mean male height and the average uh, for these average heights of the sample of girls and the sample of boys? Well, what we could do is we could use some Fathom software, which we're not uh, using, uh, but they, we can. The system allows uh, us to generate many sample sizes uh, of 12 girls and a separate sample size of uh, eight boys. So uh, what we could do is, again, uh, do this uh, process a thousand times. And what we should see with the, uh, with the girls is that they're uh, roughly as a mean of 56. With the boys, uh, there was a mean of uh, 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 55.73. So right about there. And what we can do is, again, to find the mean of the between the two, the mean difference between the two, we certainly can just subtract. We can subtract the two means. 
But again, now with uh, with the spread, with standard deviation, we can't add or subtract standard deviations. We can only do that with variances. Uh, so we've got to keep that in mind. And we can't subtract variances. We actually add the two uh, to find the combined variance. So we'll talk about that here on this next slide. But what we do notice is that the shape of the distribution uh, is uh, still roughly normal. Uh, we start off with two normal distributions. We'll end with a normal distribution. And we notice that that, uh, that uh, center of the difference is just the difference of the centers. And then the spread, again, we'll talk about. So, uh, because both the x bar and 1 and x bar 2 are random variables, uh, the statistic of the difference of the two, uh, so in chapter 6 we learned that we can just, to find the mean of the differences, it's the difference of the means. And again, uh, to calculate standard deviation for the two, we can't just subtract standard deviations. Uh, we have to use variances, and then we add them. So if I do want the standard deviation of those differences, I have to take that square root of the sum of those variances. So um, what we're going to do is, again, kind of overall processes, choose an SRS of size n1 from population 1 with a mean mu1 and a standard deviation. Uh, and an independent sample size from, uh, of this, from the second population uh, will have a certain mean and a certain standard deviation too. What we do notice about the shape then is when the population distributions are normal, the sampling distribution of the differences is also normal. Okay? In other cases, the sampling distribution will be approximate or if the sample sizes are large enough. In other words, if we want to use the CLT, the central limit theorem, again, the sample size from the first sample has to be 30 or above, and same thing with the sample uh, size of the second population. Uh, the center of a distribution will just be the difference of those two means and the standard deviation, as I talked about above up here, uh, will have to be the standard deviation down here of the sum of the variances, the square rooted. And again, that we can only use this, is that the 10% condition is satisfied, we can use that. Again, that's the 10 times, uh, actually both, for the sample, first sample has to be less than or equal to the population, and also 10 times this, uh, the second sample has to be less than or equal to that population. So again, there's our distribution with our standard deviation of our sampling distribution. The mean is just the difference of the two. Standard deviation, again, is those, uh, the square root of the two variances added to each other. So, when data come from two random samples or two groups in a randomized experiment, the statistic is the difference in our mean sample means is our best guess for the difference in the population means if we did a really good random sample. So when the 10% condition is met, we can use this standard deviation. So uh, again, realizing that that 10 times our first sample has to be less than or equal to our population and 10 times our second sample has to be less than or equal to that population. So uh, if the normal condition is met, we standardize the observed difference to obtain a t-statistic that tells us how far the observed difference is from its mean in standard deviation units. So in other words, um, if the normal condition is met and we don't know that population standard deviation, uh, we can substitute in the sample standard deviation. And then again, we call this standard error uh, rather than standard deviation. And that's probably more realistic because a lot of times we're not given these parameters. Um, so we have to use the sample standard deviation uh, in our calculations. So our T statistic then would be, this is our sample difference uh, minus our population difference. And uh, realistically, when we start doing hypothesis testing, uh, this would end up being zero uh, when we do that because we're assuming that they're equal. Um, and again, if we're using the T, the T statistic, we have to use 
sample standard deviation because we're not given the population standard deviation. Okay. And now uh, to calculate uh, degrees of freedom, we can use technology and we'll show that uh, in class. Or what we can do is use a conservative approach and we use the smaller, the smaller of the two different degrees of freedom. And that's certainly fine to do that too. It's a conservative approach. So uh, this sample, if sample size one was 12 and this size one was eight, uh, the eight minus one or seven uh, would be the smaller of the two when we use seven degrees of freedom. Okay. In the two sample T statistic, again, we're still looking in the second box. And again, making sure we adjust randomness that we do have random samples from both groups. Uh, we're still looking at our 10% condition for both uh, sample sizes. And then for normality, again, always hoping that uh, we're sampling from a normal distribution. And if the population distributions are both normal or if both sample sizes are above 30, we're good to go. The essential limit theorem helps us with that. But again, if one of them, if one of these just one of those samples is less than 30, make sure to use a graph of the sample data uh, to assess the normality. You know, so in other words, uh, if you see, if you do not use the two sample two procedures, if you've got strong skewness or outliers in your graph of your sample data. Okay, so when the conditions are met, uh, uh, we can simply use this in box three. Uh, this is our, uh, our statistic, plus or minus our critical value. So this is our uh, critical value that we would use uh, from, the, uh, from the table. And times our uh, standard error here in this part. Okay. So again, remember, realize that uh, if you're using the t-distribution, degrees of freedom, can either be calculated just by using the menus on the calculator, or again, for using uh, stuff by hand, using values to find the table to get this value, use the smaller of the uh, two different degrees of freedom. All right, well, at this point then, we should be able to get started with section uh, 10.2, and should be able to cover these problems right here, 31, 33, 35, 35. Uh, 51, 25 through 28, 37, and 39. All right, wish you luck, and we'll see you on day two.